Hello, my name is Freddie Wong, co-writer and co-director of a little indie movie called We're All Gonna Die. I'm sitting here with Bongani Mlambo, our director of photography, and we're gonna talk about lights, cameras, and action. How good was that? That was good. That You're gonna was use great. That, right? You're gonna that use great. that, right? That's the one. This one is an existential road trip that has some sci-fi elements, a little bit of visual effects in there, but at the end of the day, it is a romantic comedy set in a world that has a giant alien thing hanging over all of us. I think for me, it's also a film about two characters dealing with uh, loss yeah. and going on this journey where they connect and find each other, but in the end also find a different version of the thing they lost, you know, and hopefully come out a little better and stronger at the yeah. end of it. That's, that's good, that's better than mine. You, you should. I don't know. I like the existential road trip movie. Every time I say that to people, people are like, what? <laughs> so, and I like, that's a, it's a great reaction to get out of people. Since this movie is a little bit of a weird genre split, it's not like a strict romantic comedy, it's also not yeah. strictly sci-fi, it's not strictly just a road movie. The road trip takes place not in the usual kind of spots. Like we knew right away that we weren't gonna be like, you know, big Monument Valley, John Ford, you know, types of stuff. And I think Reservation Dogs captured it so well. The feeling of like, oh, this is still America, but here's things that are a little bit different. We knew that we wanted to have kind of a handheldy, a little more documentary feeling uh -huh. sort of thing, you know, like it wasn't gonna be uh, fishers and, and like circle dollies and all that stuff. Um, so having that a little looser, but then the problem I think was to then try and pull back from that aesthetic a little bit. I think a big factor in picking gear was being as nimble as yes. possible. Speed and agility more so than anything else. We shot with the C300 Mark III. We wanted something that was going to be good in low light. I think the C70 as well, has yeah, the same as our B cam, yeah. As well, uh, same sensor. And so that was great. And we shot with the CP3s and then the 21 to 100 Zeiss Zoom. Yeah. That was really good. That became like our main kind it of lens. It was really good. For, I always like Zooms. For a lot of it. I like Zooms. Most people are like weird about I like Zooms. What can I say? My dream camera is small, lightweight, and you don't have to recharge it. <laughs> like, because everyone builds their camera so big and heavy. I'm like, why? I'm getting older. <laughs> you know? I don't want, I want to carry that. So our hero truck, which most of the, you know, which a lot of the road trip stuff takes place. Mm -hmm. if you have your stuff that's in the front as they're driving, but the idea is that our, one of our characters like kind of lives out the back of it. Anything that you could small, you could hide inside was get, yeah, get hidden the and MCs, then you just, yeah, and then you could just push. A couple of those. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we did do some kind of poor man's process, like stationary stuff, shooting through the windshield. Yeah. And so for that, we are bouncing in light. Uh, I think we're sometimes using the Nova 300s yeah. as well. I'd used the 600D before, but having the 1200 and the amount of output yeah. on it, I think was great. The power drawer, I think was great. Yeah. Because then we could run the 1200 with the Novas and every other light that we were using yeah. on set on just like a regular generator. Being able to dim it, I, I just want every light to be able to dim <laughs> all the way down to like 1%. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes just because of how sensitive we were running the camera, we did have to be in like 1%, yeah, 2% yeah, yeah. and be like all the way down there, even with the modifier. Yeah. The main way I used the 1200 was as like our sun source, as our yeah. kind of hard source, and then maybe just softening it just a little bit. Like thickest, heaviest diffusion, leaning into like the full grid, uh, just to get a soft kind of wrappy quality. And then just decide how that's affecting the face by the angle. For a lot of the locations we're at, you know, through windows or recreating the sun, mm -hmm. you know, especially on those days when it did kind of get a little bit cloudy. Yeah. Like in between it's cloudy, the sun was there, but now it's gone. Yeah, and so the 1200 yeah. would kind of cover us yeah. for that part. Yeah. Everything got built up around it. It yeah, really I think that, that was part of our look is that we always did want some sort of backlight a lot of yeah. times on things. Yeah. Um, and also oriented a lot of scenes yeah. to the sun. Yeah. And so in the absence of the sun, that the 1200 became yeah. became the, the light that we'd use for that, especially so. Yeah, it was basically the foundation for like the, the most of the exterior lighting setups, especially at night too. I feel like the versatility there was good because you accessorize it in such a way that was very versatile. It was very cold. We had some below uh -huh. zero days. 
We had night shoots where it was just like just clouds wet and and, and rain. mucky and rain. Yeah. And all. We didn't have snow. We literally left Utah like just one week before, before snow. snow started. Yeah. Yeah. It really was the cold and how well the stuff, all of, all of the amateur lights held up in the, yeah. in the cold. Yeah, because some other gear definitely got affected by the cold. Yeah. But... I needed more of a like covering, you know? <laughs> I felt I was more sensitive than the lights were. <laughs> <laughs> What inspired you to move from doing the YouTube stuff mm -hmm. and make your first movie? I love long form narrative and movies, you know? The reason why we even started on YouTube was because we just wanted to make stuff and that was the easiest way of doing it. Was just like, okay, cool, we just upload it and people can see it, cool, let's just do that. So we've always wanted to get into doing movies, you know, and we've done long form stuff. We had done, you know, our, our web series. We've done a couple of shows with Hulu. Yeah. But the feature film has its own self-contained sort of storytelling thing. It's why it's why I'm doing any of this in the first place. We, we were trying for a while. We had a lot of scripts. We've done writing gigs. We've go around financiers, producers, pitching you know, with projects in various states of development, like everybody says. But at a certain point, we're just like, ah, let's just do one that we can actually just do. So yeah. we financed it off of like what we were making off of our podcast. We say it's like, yeah, this is our first feature, but it's definitely not the first thing we've shot. Either, first you know, movie, it's yeah. like, I think that, that experience has been helpful, but it's mostly because that's like kind of what we were always focusing on. You and Matt knew what you wanted kind yeah. of all the time. Yeah. Uh, interesting having both of you as directors, speaking to one person and talking about the shot list and then talking to the other person separately and they start saying the exact same things the other person is saying <laughs> to her and but just, on set, I think being able to make decisions quickly, yeah. and I think all that experience definitely helped knowing yeah. what you needed for the edit, yeah. what you needed for VFX. Why did I move here? I guess it was the weather. Video games, yes. huge industry. The crashing... it's, gonna, it's gonna, it's already way yeah. bigger. The more you know about all of it, I think the better off you are. Like if you were sitting there and you're like, I know how to light in Unreal. And now if it's like, okay, hey, we gotta do a, a, a thing with virtual production. It's like, oh, okay, right, cool. You have that knowledge and yeah. you can build as much because it's, it's, you can't just be so specialized anymore. I think it's maybe the, the point I'm trying to make. If I was gonna give anyone advice, I'd tell them to ask a lot of questions. Yeah. I think even during the time that I was ACing, I would speak to the gaffer, I'd yeah. speak to the key grip. I'd be like, what is that light? Why yeah. is the, the fusion? The more you know of the entire process, I think it can still inform the one thing yes, that you do. That you're in and charge of, right? The more that I progress in my career and the bigger shoots I do, the role of the DP almost becomes like this facilitator yeah. of between departments, but that kind of managing people yeah. end up touching every other department yeah. and having those conversations. And it's useful to just know everything about what they do yeah. and how they can help you uh, and how you can make their lives kind of easier yeah. as well. I think if you're pitching yourself, mm -hmm. I think the one move that you can do that will set you apart is when they come in with visual references, if all your visual references are like paintings. Yeah. This is the painter that I'm going for. All of a sudden it's just like, oh yo, this person isn't just dropping stills of, you know, TV shows and stuff that's like hot right now. It's all of a sudden it's like, yo, painters though? You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, no, it's wild. I if went, you could come in like that, ooh. I went look to out. the LACMA, I think sometime during prep when we were doing it's, our yeah, this stuff. It's your man of culture. And there were a couple of paintings that's felt like the spike. Yeah. Like, and it was weird. It's a painting, but it somehow mm -hmm. has that movement yeah. in the in the lighting, in yeah. the way, in the color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That did kind of stick as references as well. Yeah. You can find inspiration anywhere. That was Benjamin the thing that Lynch. I took away from all of this, this last pro movie project, which was realizing that a healthy appreciation of all the other art forms, poetry, visual language stuff, you know, music, you need to start thinking about things like, how can I make this image resonate in the similar way that this piece of poetry does, on, that these words do. When you start to explore how to be able to tie that together at, on a theoretical level, I think is when you start to make really, really interesting stuff.